everyone, I'm Carrie Evenson and welcome to Carrie on Canvas. Do you ever feel like you have lost your way? Maybe you just sort of shoved yourself aside to take care of others, whether it be your family, your job, your friends. I think in life we all tend to forget about the person we once were and somehow we wake up and say, where did I go? Only to find a stranger in the mirror, someone we only knew long ago. Well, it's at this particular time that you must find a way to begin believing in yourself again and taking the time out to find out who you are. Sort of like stepping off the bus in a new city and greeting it for the first time. This is a chance for you to greet yourself. A chance for you to find your way back to you. So stick around. I have a simple figurative piece we are going to work on to help us loosen up and begin our creative journey. Here's what you're going to need. Medium sized canvas, medium to large paint brushes, assorted acrylic paint, paper towels or rags. Don't forget your water to keep your brushes clean. And of course, let this time be for you. So I have this 12 by 24 canvas. And for some of you that <clears throat> know a little bit about my art, this is one of my favorite um, dimensions to work on. And I like elongated figures, so I tend to always draw my figures a little bit longer than what they're supposed to be proportioned. <clears throat> but that's my style and you don't have to do that. So here I just have a figurative piece and it's sort of a symbolic piece to me about a woman finding herself again and the, the birds represent freedom. And for those of you who follow the Rising Free series that I've done, um, this, this uh, piece will be a part of that series. So we're gonna go ahead and begin. And normally I tone my canvas, but I didn't today so that you can see um, how vibrant and brilliant the colors are gonna look just on the white canvas. So let's get started. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of move around with some blue violets, some yellow oranges, and some red oranges. And I really want the woman to stand out. So we're gonna make her the lightest color in the painting. So we'll just get started with her, and by doing that, we're gonna add a yellow orange. By making a yellow orange, I'm gonna take my yellow orange azo or cadmium yellow. You can use any warm yellow that you'd like. Um, you wanna stay away from the lemon yellows and yellows that tend to be of a cooler tone. So I have this, that's a little too orange. And a little bit of white. And I'm just going to apply the paint. Now you can see on here that I used charcoal. Um, a lot of you ask me, what do you use to, to sketch your canvases? Normally, I just paint the figures. But I like you guys to be able to see because for some of you that are beginners, it's a little intimidating to just stare at a blank canvas and not really know where you're going. So this is a tool you can use until you get more comfortable. And so by using the charcoal, which is just a vine charcoal that you can get at your uh, your craft store. And um, what I do to keep it from smudging is I use a workable fixative spray that I spray over. Make sure you go outside when you do it because it definitely is potent and um, has a very strong odor to it. And then you spray it, let it dry, and it, your charcoal won't smudge. And you can also do the same thing with pencil if you'd like. So, Base coat of the dress, bam, done. That's it, right? That's all we have to do. So we're gonna move on. And already, I mean, I'm just liking it already, just the color, it's beautiful. So blue violet. Now something else, you guys, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this as we go on through the show, is if you have trouble with your colors, you can use your complementary colors. So get out your color wheel and if you're saying to yourself, gosh, I just don't know what colors to choose. They always look weird or odd or awkward. Just get your color wheel and make it simple and pick a comp pick complementary colors, colors and just work with that. Adding, you know, white or black to add texture. I mean, not texture, tone. So you can lighten it or darken it that way. I mean, just keep it simple when you're first starting out. There's no reason for you to, to get stressed about it. I have a little little animals on this piece. I have a little turtle and a little a couple little birds flying around. I put the turtle in there as a reminder of what it means to slow down in your journey of life and not not rush through it, just enjoy it. 
And the birds are in there as a symbol for being free to be who we are, which is always something I strive to do, and I hope that you do too. So we have this kind of violet, blue violet here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white. And so basically what we're doing is just putting a base coat down. And I'm gonna keep working around the piece. You don't wanna get bogged down or stuck in one area because all that does is that just creates mud, first of all, and then tension. And we don't need tension when we're painting, not at all. So let's take a little bit of the red. Now I'm going to apply red-orange in these buildings in the background here. This is this is just uh, fairly simple. You know, getting your base coats down is always pretty easy. You come back as you're painting and refine everything. Okay, let's add a little bit more. Oh, I love this color. This is a lizard and crimson. I hope I pronounced that right. And um, it's a deeper, a deeper red, but I really love it. It's a beautiful color. It's very translucent, so it goes on very thin, kind of see-through. It's not opaque like the other, like other paints that I use. Just filling in the buildings here in the background, and we'll come back in with some more detail once I get it's a stretch over here trying to reach the top of this canvas. Uh, but once I get the uh, base coat down, then we'll start kind of working in shadows and things like that. Beautiful colors already. Love it. All right, so we have, let's see, you know what else we forgot? Up, oh, gotta do the sky. But we want sunshine, so we're gonna go with yellow. Just kind of blend it in up there. There we go. Okay, now. Take some blue. Kind of fill in these areas here. A little bit of white. And the blue that I'm using, I, I use several different blues, so I'll just name them and they kind of all have different, a little bit of different tints to them. But I have phthalo blue in the green shade and I have um, ultramarine and I use cobalt a lot, which is a beautiful color. I don't actually have it on the canvas this time. And Prussian blue. So you can kind of pick and choose which blues you like better. Moving around. Now, let's see. I think what I might go ahead and do is add some more red to this bridge area, and then I'm gonna take in a little bit of black and kind of sketch that in myself. So let's add, let's try a little bit of both here. Let's go, let's go with this dark red. Dark red meaning the alizarin red that I'm using. And 
Notice I'm not freaking out when I get some on her dress. It's not a big deal. Look, we'll even just put some on there. Take my finger, get it wet a little, and just blend. You could just get messy with this and not even really worry about it. Okay. So now, oh, you know what? We forgot a little bit in the background here under her arm. We'll just add some there. All right, now let's move with, keep more paper towels. Really, really, it's a lot better to use rags instead of paper towels if you can, because um, they won't get as soggy. Okay, so let's, mm, let's make her skin tone. Now the skin tone, I just keep it simple. I just use like a burnt sienna and white and then if I want more of a gold tone to it, I'll add a little bit of yellow, or if I want more of a pink tone, I'll add a little bit of magenta. But we're just gonna keep it simple. Paint her face in. Made it a little fat there. And then we're just gonna come in and I'm gonna scoot this down so I can see. We are going to come in and paint her arm. We'll use a smaller brush for this. So again, burnt sienna, white, makes a skin tone. You can also mix complementary colors with white, you know, until you get a brown tone and then add white. There's lots of different ways to do it. Okay. We're gonna move around the canvas here. We're gonna start painting in the man. And let's see, let's start with some hair color now. We're gonna use black and a brown. Keep your strokes loose. Don't make it so tight and if it helps hold your brush your brush differently. You can hold it like this. Especially if you're working on a canvas. It's so much easier if you guys are at home and you're painting sitting down. Stand up like right now. Stand up put your canvas on an easel or stand up at a low table and paint because you won't really ever learn how to paint really loose and free sitting at the same spot because you can't move around and really look at your piece the way you need to. Okay. So we are going to add the gentleman in here. Just filling in the lines, guys, that's really about it, somewhat. Not a big deal. Okay, going to a bigger brush here. Oh, let's rinse this real quick. All right, so now, We're gonna take this black at the pants, which is very, very, very simple. It's just shapes. And that's the way you should look at a painting is just look at it like it's a shape. Um, that everything you're doing is, is based upon shapes. Not so much a face or a hand, but the shape of the face, the shape of the hand. Okay. And let's move over to Add some sky here and a little bit of red here.
All right, filling in now the birds. We're just kind of moving around the piece. And basically I'm filling these in so you can kind of get an idea of where things go and, and how things work when you're, when you're painting. Just moving around, you can always come back and change things up. But this will keep you from getting tight within your painting and allow you to be a little bit more free with what you're doing. And I really appreciate those of you that have sent me images of the work that you've done from watching the show. I just think they're absolutely fantastic and I'm so inspired and proud at the same time that you guys share them with me and paint with me. It's just wonderful and it makes me feel really good. It's always nice to know that you're doing something to help others. It's a good feeling. Okay, I'm um, going to start painting in her dress a little bit. Fairly simple piece, not too difficult. You guys got this. And I'm basically just adding a little bit of yellow, yellow, orange, red, colors like that. Mixing it together and putting it on and not making too much of a fuss about it. So we know that if we have some shadow coming in somewhere or light coming in then we need to add a darker area to the dress and then we can always come back and add yellow white to highlight areas So think about when you wear a gown or a dress of some kind, you always have shadow underneath the breast area and you always have a little bit of shadow in the waist area and that's kind of the same thing that you do to a painting. I use my fingers a lot to blend guys so don't be afraid to do that. It washes off. I think even if it was permanent I'd still use my fingers to blend just because it's such a habit and it's fun. I just walk around with red fingers all day or orange. Okay, so getting there. We are getting there. Set that down, come back to my smaller brush and start adding some light in on her dress. Because she's the primary focus of this piece. So she's gonna have the most detail. We want all eyes to be on her. shape her breast a little bit by just adding some shadow under there and not make it stick out out of her armpit it's a little strange okay there we go so kind of work throughout the piece Adding a little teal on the dress in certain areas. Sometimes when you're working too, I've mentioned this before, it's good to add sort of a wow color, which is your color that um, kind of pops. 
make somebody take a double look. And let's see, let's go back to the skin, cover her a little bit better. Burnt sienna and white. I'll come back in with some light. We'll see how much time we have. But um, as this painting progresses, and as you work on it at home, you'll start to see things that you need to, you know, add to it. So I'm going to create some shadowing around her head. Use my finger to blend and around her neck area. shadowing under her arms. And then we're going to add some light. Now, I see that I forgot to add her neck uh, tie around her dress. So I'm going to add that in, very simple. I'm add the shirt on the guy. And can't get enough paper towels over here. Okay, and so we're going to add some light to her face. Just take a little bit of white, smear the rest with your fingers. And if you happen to go over her arm, like I did, you know, you kind of smudge outside where her arm looks really super fat, you just take your red and you just kind of outline it back out. Kind of trim off the fat. Wish I could do that with uh, my own self, is just take the paint and trim myself off. So we have, that's what's so great about painting, you can make it whatever you want. Love it. Okay. Painting in here. Filling in some areas. I'm gonna come back and add some hair here. Gives you a little bit of an idea of how to, you know, work with a piece like this. Um, we're gonna paint in the birds here. That bird's head got painted over, so we're gonna ignore it. Can pretend he's not there. But you get an idea at least of how to create a piece that, you know, fairly simple. I mean, in, in this amount of time, we've created the base coat for everything we need to really make a beautiful painting. And then you, at home, can add the details that you like to make this painting work for you. So we have just a few minutes left and I'm going to outline some areas. Oh, I forgot my little turtle. So this little guy right here Let's just make him like an awesome yellow green. He can just pop out. Poor little guy. It's a sad looking turtle, but we will work on him later. <laughs> I 
Okay. We're getting close to getting basically what we are, what we're trying to do here. Which is just kind of give you an idea as to what you can do and how you can create. Now, really fast, I'm going to outline the buildings and the bridge. Watch. Watch, watch, watch. And I will come back through here on another time and I will add the light. To the bridge area but look how fast you can work just to create a piece like this it's so cool I got my buildings I have some windows And I think for now, that's about all we have time for. So I hope that you've enjoyed painting this piece with me. And maybe, just maybe you have opened up to the idea of learning more about yourself just by letting go and creating. Sometimes you don't have to have a plan to create a painting. You just need to have the heart and desire to go for it. After all, as in life, it's not about the final destination or the finished product, but the journey that brought us to it. When you let go and allow time to find yourself, you will find your way back home and it will be when you least expect it. And on that day, you will breathe and know this is where you're supposed to be. So don't give up, keep creating, and you will find you again. And if you have any questions or comments, you know I would love to hear from you. So feel free to email me at soverycary at cox.net or you can visit my website at carryevensonart.com. So please join me again on Monday and Saturday evenings at 7.30 right here on Jones Television, Channel 22, or visit us at jonestv.org. Until then, I'm Carrie Evenson, and you've been watching Carrie on Canvas.